Welcome. Thanks for tuning in. So glad you have found us at Linden Road Online Worship Experience. And if this is your first time, we want to give a special welcome to you and say thanks for checking us out. And you could do us a favor by clicking on the digital connection card up above or leaving a comment in the chat. Or if you'd scroll down in, in the YouTube description, you can click on the link there. And we'd love to know who you are and if there's a prayer request you might have or, or a question you might have you'd like to have answered and we are grateful that you're here and we certainly hope it's not your last time and if this is your spiritual home we say welcome to you also and are grateful too that you are with us today and would invite you to use the same connection the digital cash card link up above or leave a comment in the chat or scroll down into the description on youtube and just let us know what we might need to know a prayer request or a question that you might have but together we're grateful as we come together to worship here through our online uh, worship community and so grateful that you are here. We are wanting to share a couple things from the, this past week. We were able to serve a community meal and had uh, the beautiful opportunity to actually run out of food. We don't like to do that, but that meant that we met the needs of our neighbors and I think we fed uh, 70 people. And yeah, check out this video. Again, I'm grateful for our team, Lynn Feldman, and for Carolyn Fowler, and the others that have leaned into helping to serve, to love our neighbors well. And we're grateful we can serve in that way. And then we also want to remind you that coming up this week is another movie night. This week, the movie is all about uh, Home Sweet Home. It's a story of a barista in a coffee shop who's bored with her uh, social butterfly lifestyle, and she's looking for a relationship. And so she runs into a young man in the coffee shop and turns on the charm, and, but he doesn't really respond in the way she'd like. But this week we're actually in our message, we're going to talk about relationships. So this will be a good wrap-up to our conversation here today. But check out the trailer. Hi, everyone. I'm here to share my story. I've only known superficial relationships. How was your date last night? It was good, I guess. When you meet the one, there'll be no I guess about it. A few weeks ago, I met a guy. Hi, I'm Victoria. Hey. So you see anything you like? Oh, peanut butter mocha looks great. 
What's up with this Jason guy? I'm guessing you're not his type. Is he alive? Then I can be his type. I went after him, pretending to be someone I'm not. Jason's organization builds houses. That's what you're volunteering to do. Most likely, he's a Christian if he works for them. He's probably not going to date someone who isn't. It won't be a problem. I'll just pretend. My name is Jason Holman. <clears throat> uh, none of what we do is possible without legs. <laughs> <laughs> and arms. Gotta swing those hammers. He's gonna figure it out eventually. By then, he'll be totally into me. She might be a handful. You think? I'd say she's more into hunting guys than building homes. Were you planning on working today? Or... Absolutely. Got my own tools and everything. Yeah. No. Have you swung a hammer before? <laughs> Did he you buy your whole faith act? If I want to play on his field, I have to play by his rules. You can't fake faith. We got a lot done this morning. Praise God! It's amazing how you actually build a house in such a short amount of time. Oh. While I was pretending to know what I was doing, I actually started serving. I'd like you to meet the new homeowners. I asked God to provide a home, and here you are, sacrificing your time to help someone you don't even know. I can't believe I didn't see this till now. That's what Home Based Ministries is all about. You're kind of mysterious. You're kind of a flirt. Moi? I was in a relationship. I found faith, and she found a reason to dump me. So that was a deal breaker. Victoria. Hey. Just came and said hi. Hey, Victoria. Do me a favor, just stay away. You're right about Victoria. Oh, man. I'm sorry. If you want people to like you, you let them get to know the real you. You sure about this? It's just easier to stick to what I know. I don't want to be the old me. I want to be someone that pleases God and considers others while finding out who I truly am. I heard what you said in there. Again, this is our partnership with Catalyst Resources, and it's a free opportunity. And Man, I'd love to know. You could leave a comment in the chat or you could respond with a connection card to let us know if you've watched one of the movies, just if you've been blessed by it. And uh, we're grateful that they've made it available to us to share with you. And so the link is on our webpage. You simply go to lindenroad.church forward slash movie night. It will be there each week. It's available 7 p.m. on Fridays and 7 p.m. on Sundays. And I hope you'll be blessed by it. So again, pop your popcorn and I hope you'll tune in tonight at 7 p.m. And as we come to worship this week, we come to, and as we come to worship this week, we come as people who need to be reminded of the relationship that we have with our Heavenly Father. And so let's use some music to encourage us in that and then we'll lean into week four of our series called Better. Daily I'm constrained to 
be. Let thy grace, Lord, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. So we are here in week four of our series called Better. It's a typical way many churches start out in their message series for the year to look at just what habits do we need in life. And so the last couple weeks we've looked at the idea of just dealing with who we are, of looking inside, remind ourselves that the people we lie to the most are ourselves and really trying to find a healthy response to what life brings at us. And then we talked about how we need to leave some things undone and create some margin and to actually uh, let God work in our lives by not being so busy. And then last week, we looked at the idea that we need to be filled up and the idea of pausing in our day-to-day and connecting with our Heavenly Father to connect through a Bible plan or through our time of prayer and worship through uh, music. But together, it's the idea of really finding our place in God's kingdom together. Now, one of the things I can say is we think of this idea of better, that it also has to do with the relationships we have and concerning those that we spend time with. If you'll remember, last week I shared what I thought was a sobering statistic about, in particular, all of us, but we were looking at just the impact of technology on our youth, on the 15 to 24-year-olds. Look at this graph again here that shows that really since the invention of Uh, the cell phone, what's happened over the last uh, number of years is a a steady decline in the number of friends and relationships that we have. And so this week what I want to talk about is how do we have, uh, this week what I want to lean into is how do we have better relationships and people who can encourage us to become all that God wants for us. But let's begin first with a time of prayer. Lord, you know how important relationships are, and you know how much we need each other. And so help us in this moment today, as we look at your scripture, to be aware of the types of people that are around us and how we can build relationships with them and invite them in to what you're doing. Help us to love others as you uh, have loved us and help us to see others as you see them. And we pray this morning for your scriptures to encourage us as we look at this together. And we do pray it through the strong name of Jesus. Amen. So again, we're in this series and I'm excited to talk about this particular thing because I think all of us right now are in a season where relationships really matter. And I'm convinced that our our greatest opportunity for spiritual growth doesn't happen when we're by ourselves. In fact, it happens when we're in relationship with one another not just in the building or here online, but also other opportunities to build community with each other and to be accountable to each other to see what God's doing. And that's how we grow and how we build connection with God. And that's how we become better. Now, just to remind you again, over the the last couple of weeks, we started with a big idea 
in week one that if you want to change your life, you need to change your habits. But if you want to change your habits, you need to let God change your heart. And so we really begin there, realizing that we can't do it without him. And then in last week's message, the idea was creating margin in your day-to-day walk where you can find reconnection with him. Remember, I used the analogy of the water glass, how we pour our lives out into the people around us. But then we need to stop and let our uh, lives be filled back up by our Heavenly Father uh, teaching us and loving us and encouraging us. And I want to say, too, that this idea of better, that I am just convinced that the living a life with Jesus is the best way to understand life. It's the best way to live. And when we walk in a relationship with him, with others, our lives are indeed better. And so as we've looked at these last three weeks, uh, at the impact God can have in our lives, we're going to begin this new year. And it's all about really priorities, right? We talked last week about how you have time for what you make time for. And so really the idea we want to begin is that when we put God first, the rest of our lives will fall into order. And yet if we get it backwards, the most important things in our lives will suffer. And so today what I want to look at is that the people that we surround ourselves with have amazingly good and bad effects on us. And sometimes it's important for us to focus on having better relationships and surrounding ourselves with others who also want to be better. So I want to tap into a story from a book that came out many years ago, uh, the the great uh, motivational speaker, Dale Carnegie. He wrote a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. And in that book, there's a lot of wisdom. uh, And he gives some very basic and effective advice for how we can develop meaningful relationships. So here's five points. Uh, First, become genuinely interested in other people. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Number two, smile. If you want to draw others to you, light up your face with a smile. Number three, remember names. A person's name is the sweetest and the most important sound to that person. Number four, be a good listener. Encourage others to talk about themselves. And number five, talk in terms of the other person's interest. Treat others the way they want to be treated. So I'd be interested of these five relational instructions. Which one is the most helpful in your life experience? Maybe you could put that in the chat here. Just thinking through, what is it that uh, you found to be that that you found that connects you to other people? I think for me, especially in this last season, is this idea of becoming generally interested in other people, of hearing their stories, of understanding who they are, and to show that I care by uh, leaning into just listening. So it's actually a couple of these for me, I think, as I've learned in this season of life because of just the things I get to do and the people I spend time with. Now, as we think about relationships, and sort of here's the big idea is, and we've talked about this before, we are created for relationships. The truth is we were designed to live our best lives when we do it in the context of community. But the problem is we don't always choose the the right people to surround ourselves with. And many times we could actually do better. And as we look at God's word, we know there's some really good practical wisdom for living in healthy community with one another. In fact, Proverbs, one that we go to all the time for the wisdom of Solomon says, the righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. Even this week in jail, it was interesting, a couple of the guys, as we talked about relationships and just thinking about one in particular, one of the guys was getting ready to get released and just, you know, who's your go-to when you're on the outside and are they a positive influence? And they pointed out a number of scriptures, particularly out of Proverbs, where the idea of the fool uh, and the choices that they make. Now, I want to say this, that we need to think about the people that we choose to have a relationship with. And like we saw last week, uh, Jesus in his life here on earth was very intentional and very consistent in the things he did. And so for us, I think those same principles can be applied as we think about those that we need to be in relationship with. And what I want to say is that rather than leaving our closest relationships to chance, 
what we need to do is make a, a very directed and intentional effort to surround ourselves with people who are uh, carefully chosen. So the first point for us this week is that good relationships are not left to chance. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, the righteous know the kind of person that they want to be and in, in choose to be around. Uh, that choose to be around people who are going to help you choose and achieve those goals in life, particularly if you're a person of faith that God's people look for people who make them better versions of themselves, that God's people seek out people who love God with their whole hearts and live out each day. Now, the problem is some people don't have the best interests in mind, right? And some people don't live based on a desire to please God. Some people don't make us better. Rather, some can actually make us bitter. And what I want to say is that the difference between a positive relationship and the negative ones can be the difference between graffiti and a, an art gallery. I mean, graffiti is haphazard, it's messy, it's unpredictable. An art gallery is much different. Even as we walked the halls of the Louvre, Melinda and I did with Sarah in France earlier this year to see the amazing beauty in the paintings that were there. Now, I have to admit, as we rode the trains and we looked at the uh, walls around the train stations, there was amazing uh, graffiti there that was art in its own self, but it reflected uh, chaos, if you will. It wasn't curated. It, it, it isn't like an art gallery that's strategic and where it's actually things are thought through. That The art behind uh, building relationships can be also seen in the same way. And so if we leave our closest connections to accidental encounters, What's going to happen is we're going to find ourselves being led to places that we never wanted to go to to begin with. And we end up becoming people we never intended to be. Now, and when we think about relationships, right, when we look at the model that Jesus has for us, we see how he uh, had a way to develop better relationships. And again, with his being consistent and intentional, we see that Jesus certainly spent time with a lot of people. And we'll call them the crowd. And although he did spend time there, that isn't where his main focus was. And instead, he, he invested in, in the disciples, and he did most of his life with them. But even in that relationship he had of 12, he also had three that were even in a closer relationship with him, you know, Peter, James, and John. And that's where he really invested his time and energy. The Apostle Paul writes about this kind of thing in his letter to the early church in Corinth. And the reason why Paul does that is because the struggle to surround themselves, the early church, with the right people was a problem. And so it isn't a problem that should be new to us. It has been going on in the human story for a long time. We all know this verse, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 4 through 7. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. And so what's Paul doing here? Well, he's outlining what true relationships look like. The true relationships are built on the love of God and what it looks like in our lives. And as you read through these words, these are simple ideas, and yet they're very profound, right? Very profound characteristics. Even as I think about this, I can't help but think to myself that there are those kinds of relationships that I really want to have in my own life, that I want to connect with people who are patient and kind. I want to trust people who are not self-seeking or proud. I want to have friendships that always protect one another and that they persevere through difficult times. And for us, that means that we need to be aware of the people that are in our sphere of influence and where we notice others when someone will demonstrate that these attributes that Paul says just may be the best way to develop better relationships in a new year. As we think about it, a good friend, right, that has these kinds of characteristics makes us feel safe and loved and supported. The truth is that some of the greatest friendships that I've ever had in my life have been because they fit this passage so well. Many of them were born out of adversity and struggle. One of the stories that I love to tell is about Jackie Robinson, who was the first black athlete to play Major League Baseball. He broke baseball's 
color barrier, and yet he faced jeering crowds in every stadium he went to. And then while playing one in his home stadium in Brooklyn, New York, he committed an error on the field. And the fans at that point began to ridicule him. He stood at second base humiliated while the fans heckled him. And it was at the height of the tension when he felt the most alone that suddenly shortstop Pee Wee Reese came over and stood next to him. It's an amazing moment. And he put his arm around Jackie Robinson and he faced the crowd. The fans grew silent. Jackie Robinson later said that that arm around his shoulder saved his career. Now, as we think about it, some of us need to have someone like Pee Wee Reese in our life. Someone who's willing to come and stand next to us when no one else will. Someone who will face down the jeering crowds so we don't have to do it alone. My question is, do you have someone like that? Do you have someone who, who lives out this idea of patience and kindness and humility? Who lives out love and truth and joy that Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians? Again, I want to encourage you in this new year, in this new month even, that you need to find someone that can do that. Because when life gets difficult, when life throws us a curveball, when difficult circumstances come at us, like whether it's losing a job or maybe having struggles in your marriage, addiction or sinful temptation, you don't have to go it alone. And so as important as it is for us to be on the lookout for godly friendships, there's also an important aspect of better relationship that often goes overlooked. And that's this. Our third point today is what kind of a friend am I? The truth is that in order for us to have better relationships, we also have to be someone that might be able to develop a relationship with, that we need to be better, that we must live with a sober self-assessment and be able to answer honestly if we're going to be the kind of people that God wants us to be. If you were to be honest, let me ask you this. What kind of a friend are you? Are you trustworthy? Are you kind? Are you forgiving? Do you have others' best interests in mind? It's interesting that Paul writes about this need for an others-focused life in the book of Romans. In Romans chapter 12, verse 10, Paul says, Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Now, what Paul's doing here in this amazing book that he wrote is giving us instruction individually on how to live in meaningful relationships with one another. And rather than just expect that everyone else would cater to my needs and desires, I make a conscious effort to be devoted to others through this idea of love. Now, this word for love that Paul uses in particular here is the word Philadelphia, right? We know that word. It's the city of brotherly love, right? It's this idea that Paul wants us to be invited into a love for one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. There is a deep connection that's made as a part of God's family because of that. And then he says that we need to honor one another above ourselves. And that's the focal point of this passage. Without putting other people first and honoring them by the way that we treat them, there is no hope, he wants us to know, of building better relationships that are not somehow one-sided. Now, a number of years ago in a devotional magazine called Daily Walk, they wrote a story that I think is timeless, that even though it's dated, I think it can be helpful in the moment right now. The title of the article was How to Be Miserable. And it says this, Think about yourself. Talk about yourself. Use I as often as possible. Mirror yourself continually in the opinion of others. Listen greedily to what people say about you. Expect to be appreciated. Be suspicious. Be jealous and envious. Be sensitive to slights. Never forgive a criticism. Trust nobody but yourself. Insist on consideration and respect. Demand agreement with your own views on everything. And then sulk if people are not grateful to you for favors shown them. And never forget a service that you have rendered. Shirk your duties if you can. Do as little as possible for others. Wow, that's uh, maybe a dated list that was actually from a publication in 1993, but I think it's very true about our lives today. 
Because what we can do is take the exact opposite route and be a person who is focused on, on others in their life. In fact, maybe we can say that you need to be the type of friend that you want to have. So as we land the plane today, as we talk about the idea of having a better life by having better relationships, once again, I want us to look at Jesus as our best example for what better relationships look like. He was the standard for living a life of humility and service. And it was through his life his death and his resurrection, that he demonstrated for us how to love others well. So as we lean into a new month, part of this new year, I want to encourage us to make a commitment to surround ourselves with people who will push us closer to Jesus. I pray that we can pay uh, close attention to the kind of fruit that our closest friends demonstrate. And then, without too much judgment on ourselves, pay even closer attention our own fruit to make sure that we're the kind of person who could encourage and support people who we enter into a friendship with and that we can be better with. Now, I think it's also helpful that we take a step back and reevaluate and perhaps better relationships are exactly what you need. And so let's pray. God, we are grateful for the life that you give us and we pray that we can be people of 1 Corinthians 13. May we demonstrate that not because of our own striving, as we've talked about these last couple of weeks, but because of pausing and connecting with you and allowing your Holy Spirit to work in our lives in fresh and new ways. We just pray your presence now into the week ahead that we can be people who can be better at doing life. And we just thank you for that promise and opportunity through Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Let's continue our time of worship through music. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see t'was grace that taught my heart to fear in grace my feet i 
soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever. Again, thanks for being with us this week. I want to encourage you to check out Movie Night Tonight with Home Sweet Home. Hope you'll enjoy it. And we also want to encourage you that in the week ahead, that you've been blessed to be a blessing. So go forth and serve Christ in his name. Amen. Have a great week. <music>